Well, good evening to you all. How are you doing? Good evening to you all. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good evening to everyone. Welcome. Good evening, good evening. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for being here. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I'm just waiting for the rest of the people to come in. Good evening, everyone. Danny Lan Sapkawi. Sapkawi. What a pretty name, Sapkawi. Let me make sure I'm getting my messages. Well, good evening. Just G this is Jesus Girl Betty. How are you? Hey, Doreen. Just be right. Hey there. Just be real. I'm depending on you tonight because, you know, once I uh, uh, make sure you gather all the moderators together and you guys make sure that you moderate well for me because I won't be able to look up at the um, hey new Donna Rises. Um, good evening to you guys because I'm going to be focused on teaching. And so you guys do whatever you have to do. If you have the block, you know, if you, you don't have to. For some people, it's not a timeout. Some people is an actual block. And so if you need to block people off the channel, please. I'm doing great. Please feel free. You know, we're not going to have any drama this evening, but I'm going to come in. I'm going to do some teaching. You know, it's like five days, four days worth of teaching in one evening. And um, so I'm going to be on here teaching. And so I may not be able to look up at the comments that often. Thank you so much. How are you doing, Uniquely Made? Hey, Miss Angela, how are you? Hey, Miss Chat is Uniquely Made. Miss Chat, uh, where Stevie Bananas got um, Just Be Real, got New Donna Rises, looking for Telsha. Hey, PR, looking for Telsha. Good evening, Monique and Karen. Is it Karen? Karen, thank you so much for being here. Um, and you guys, you guys handle your business over there as moderators. I know you guys see I'm missing some fingernails, so I apologize. But, uh, uh, well, hey there, Jar, Jar, Jar. How are you doing, beautiful lady? So you guys, you guys do what you got to do over there. If uh, the people get out of control, you know to block them. Just take them off. You don't have to argue with them. You don't have to. Some of you, you know, moderators, you don't have to argue with people. You guys handle your business. And a uh, good evening to each one of you. Thank you so much. And um, you guys handle your business. I'm going to do some teaching this evening. And so uh, once I get done with the teaching, I'll open it up for a few minutes for um, for uh, for questions. And then we're going to switch over to um, for those of you that are on um, what I say it was Clubhouse. For those of you that are on Clubhouse, I'm getting ready to go live on Clubhouse. I just wanted everybody to start coming in because, you know, our salutations take, I know, block, block and release, block and release. There you go, girl. You got it. Block and, and release. Block, release. You got it. But um, thank you so much. And hello and thank you, North Carolina. Welcome, welcome. Welcome this evening. So I know... Um, so I know I haven't been here all week, so you know I'm going to put a whole four days worth of teaching in one evening. So I might not be able to, to, to look up and read the comments until we get to the question and answers. But what I'm getting ready to do, I'm trying to prepare my earphones. So I got my earphones on, got my microphone on. You guys can hear me. You can't find me on Clubhouse. Um, I'm going to come on now. So you'll see me. So let me come on now, okay? So let me get in the Clubhouse and start Clubhouse. So I am coming on Clubhouse now. And what I'm going to do is, hey, Miss Kimberly, how are you doing? Good evening to you. Good evening to you. Good evening. How is everyone? Hey, Misha, is it Misha? Hey, Misha, how are you? Hello and welcome. Welcome to all my people here. Hey, Sahar, beautiful name. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. Thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, for those of you, hey, just be real over here at Clubhouse, too. You're everywhere. Well, thank you guys so much for being here. Good evening to each one of you. Um, it is open to everyone um, on Clubhouse. If you guys, uh, let's look. Let's see. Hey, Kristen, how are you doing? Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. So first of all, allow me to say good evening to everyone. For those of you, I am also streaming live on Periscope, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. And so is Clubhouse just for Apple? It is, yes. 
Uh, it is just for Apple. Thank you guys so much for being here tonight. I wanted to talk to you guys um, as something that I really wanted to discuss. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do some teaching first. I'm going to give you some guys ideas about narcissistic personality disorder in relationships. A lot of you guys have been in a relationship with a person that has narcissistic personality disorder versus what you hear people saying narcissism and narcissistic relationships. Um, not everybody is a narcissist, but we're going to talk about it so I can uh, explain to you guys what it is. Those of you that have been following on the other platforms, uh, there's three, four hundred videos on YouTube. Hello, Miss Lisa. There's three, four hundred videos on YouTube. You guys are welcome to go through those videos. I talk about it in detail. So I wanted to come on this evening because I wanted to do some clarification on the, the term narcissism and narcissistic relationship versus being in a relationship with an individual that has narcissistic personality disorder. There is a difference. And I hear a lot, you know, as a Miss Betty, uh, I hear a lot um, uh, when people are talking about, you know, toxic relationship, narcissistic relationship uh, versus someone that has narcissistic personality disorder. And so in this conversation, you guys know, you guys know that. Um, um, OK, hold on just a minute. So you guys know that. Hey, Miss Clade, it was Claude or Clade. I'm sorry if I mispronounced it. But um, so. You hear a lot of people talking about narcissistic relationships or a person that is narcissistic or narcissism, which oftentimes they're talking about toxic relationships and people that have some traits of narcissism or narcissistic uh, 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 personality disorder, but that does not mean they actually have the disorder. Some of you have been in relationships and come from families that have NPD. And so uh, what I want to talk about is I'm going to help you distinguish the difference. And so, like I said, you know, as a professional, as a professional that works with, um, you know, victims of domestic violence, especially dealing with, um, excuse me, you guys, uh, especially dealing with um, people that have been in a relationship with narcissists, there is a big difference. Most of the time when you hear people say people freely use that word narcissism or narcissistic relationship, they use it freely, but they really don't know in depth what they're dealing with or an individual that has NPD. So most of the time when you hear people say narcissistic relationship, they're talking about uh, a toxic relationship. They're talking about some individual or a person that you're in a relationship with that is irresponsible, that is abusive, that 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 won't, you know, they're self-absorbed, they're they're you know, self-absorbed, they're, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They're, they're, they seem to lack empathy or compassion. They seem not to want to connect with anybody. Uh, but in reality, they still have, they do have empathy, but they have problems. When you're dealing with a person that has narcissistic personality disorder, you're dealing with a person, and I wrote some notes down so I can look down. So give me a, give me a minute. When you're dealing with a person that has narcissistic personality disorder, you're dealing with a person that has a pathological mental condition. It is a mental condition or a mental illness, a psychological disorder, which is actually a personality disorder. And this personality disorder has developed from childhood. Majority of the people that have seen in my office, uh, uh, majority of them, and statistically speaking, statistically, and I know most narcissists are not going in to get tested. They're not coming in uh, to get diagnosed. But statistically speaking, those that have been uh, diagnosed by a mental health professional or a doctor, the majority of them have been males. Yes, we do have female narcissists. We know that. But the statistics, statistic wise, it is a higher percentage of people with narcissistic personality disorder that are men uh, versus females, though females have it as well. And when you're dealing with that personality disorder, you're dealing with an individual that you'll see that have excessive need for admiration. Now, that sounds like the regular toxic individual. You're dealing with a person that disregards others they don't have empathy and the reason why they don't have empathy uh, most of the time what happens is is they've been traumatized in their developmental aid of uh, the developmental process in childhood so in the developmental phase of their childhood what ends up happening is majority of the ones that I have worked with have been sexually molested sexually um, um, sexually uh, molested sexually uh, I'm looking violated abused neglected rejected 
or they've been raised by narcissistic parents. And so some of you may say, well, the narcissist that I was with um, was not sexually molested or abused. Number one, you'll never get the full truth out of a person that has narcissistic personality disorder because number one, they have a very, very so low self-esteem. And so what they do is, is they will create this facade or this image of themselves where they're grandiose they're, they're, and they're, remember, they have deep feelings of insecurity and they create an idealized, grandiose image of themselves. The majority of these individuals have been traumatized in childhood. And even if you look at them and say that they were spoiled, they were the golden child. They were pampered, you know, uh, yes, but the problem is, is during that developmental stage, they're not learning empathy. Empathy is something that is learned. And if you think about like with your own on children, you see them cat or a dog and you're like, oh no, 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 soft touch. And maybe you pinch them back to show them what it feels like. And then they get the understanding like, no, that hurts. Don't do that. That's an owie, you know, soft touch, soft touch. So empathy is learned. Well, if you're being raised by an individual that has narcissistic personality disorder, they themselves do not have compassion or empathy. So how are they going to teach compassion or empathy to anybody else? And so when you're being raised by, and then uh, a child that is being raised by a person that has narcissistic personalities that they don't get hugged. Most of you guys can't even say that you were hugged. And if you were hugged by the parent, it felt empty. It felt like something was missing. And so these individuals with this condition, they develop a person. What happens is they turn inward. They turn inward to protect themselves and they become very self-absorbed out of, out of necessity. And everything that they do, there's an ulterior motive. They're, they have an ulterior motive in everything they do, even if they're kind to you, even if they're loving to you, there's a reason why they're doing what they're doing. And they're doing it because they're trying to, um, they're trying to number one, boost their own self-esteem, which that doesn't happen, their own ego, but they're getting something out of it. They don't have the common sense, you know, because they are disordered to ask for something. Instead of asking for something, they'll manipulate what they want from a person. They take advantage of people all the time. And so if you if you've ever been in one, you'll notice that they live in a fantasy world. They act entitled. They consider themselves special. They expect a favorable treatment. They exploit others. They demean, intimidate, bully or belittle. So some of you guys are like, well, that sounds like the average person that I've been in a relationship with. That is true. Probably so. But check this out. Let's talk about trauma, certain type of trauma that people have gone through. Some of you guys heard the term empath. Well, empaths come from severe trauma as well. Not everybody handles trauma the exact same way. Everybody is not affected to trauma the exact same way. There are a lot of things that play into developing narcissistic personality disorder. Most people that have been traumatized, a lot of them do not develop narcissistic personality disorder. Some of them have uh, PTSD, depression, anxiety, different things that, that that's treatable. And then there are some um, that if you look in their history, there are people in their family that has narcissistic personality disorder disorder. People that have been, for example, I'm going to give you an example of some case, cases that I've had. You've had a man that has been sexually molested by his sister uh, when he was young and when he was a little boy. And what ends up happening is, is every woman now pays the price for what his sister's done. He has problems with relationships. He has problems in relationships with women because of the fact that he was molested by a woman. So because he was molested by a woman, as I begin to explain, he felt like his body had failed him because he climaxed because his body actually. And he said, he said, I can't lie to you. It felt good, but I'm ashamed. I'm humiliated because of the fact that it was my sister and her friend. Once I begin to work with him, he began to show empathy. He begins. He hated his sister, but he began to feel bad about how he treated other women. You have some uh, men that have been molested it by a man growing up and so you'll find them and I'm not saying all of them this is just what I have noticed with the people that I have worked with they were molested by a, a male family member a male of the father and what ended up happening was is that they become extra macho they have to prove that they're a man or masculine you notice they're always trying to get big or they're very promiscuous they have a lot of women because they want to and what one person said to me was is I'm trying to prove I'm not gay and the problem was, is as I begin to speak to him about the physiological uh, reactions of 
the body when it's being sexually groomed or whatever is that when you when you massage the prostate it's going to cause an erection or climax and once he began to understand you could tell he began to change Narcissus does not change in therapy. It doesn't matter. And half the time, you can't even get all the truth. And so some of you may have asked the person that you in a relationship with that you notice may have narcissistic personality disorder. But the problem is, is that you can't get all the truth. Think about it. Some of you guys have been molested. Some of you guys have been sexually assaulted as children. And out of that trauma, whatever trauma a person has went through in that cluster B personality disorder, cluster B personality disorder developed from trauma. And in that cluster B personality disorder, where you find narcissistic personality disorder, you'll find borderline personality disorder, you'll find histrionic personality disorder, you'll also find what's called antisocial personality disorder, formerly known as psychopath or sociopath. Now, in that circle, a lot of borderline personality disorder oftentimes has a high rate of narcissistic personality disorder, so they can have both. Most um, narcissists, narcissists, people think that they have bipolar. Some of them do, but a lot of them have the traits of borderline. All of them feed off of each other in a circle. And so a lot of them have the traits. And so a lot of times they're misdiagnosed because you don't know what it is that this person is. And a lot of times they have narcissistic personality disorder, but they have traits of all the other the cluster B, but it all comes from trauma. Believe it or not, a lot of you that uh, that um, say that you're empaths, that is actually what happens with empaths is that they have been traumatized in childhood as well. And a lot of them do come from homes of narcissists. And some of them develop, some people develop narcissistic personality disorder because of the trauma. Some of them actually, and most people try to spiritualize everything. And so an empath is not, you know, you do have Christian empaths and you do have, you don't have to be a Christian to be an empath, but those are highly sensitive, very highly intuitive individuals. They're so sensitive to the needs of other that they want to rescue everything. Everyone, but it comes from the severe trauma that they went through in their own life. And so they are physically and chemically cre they're created that way to be highly intuitive. Some of them actually can taste colors. Some of them, when they hear music, can see uh, like um, not objects, but they can see like uh, uh, circles and they, you know, they can see imagery. They can talk to people and they can actually see words. They can walk into a room and they're so sensitive that words have energy. Thought has energy. They can sense that. They can feel that. That's why a lot of them feel more comfortable being in nature because nature is calming to them. They can feel, you know, a lot of empaths deal with animals. They're animal lovers. And so this also stems from severe trauma in childhood. So everyone does not develop develop narcissistic personality disorder. Now in childhood, when these children have been traumatized like this and say they do develop narcissistic personality disorder, oftentimes it goes, you know, you don't see it. You don't know what you're looking for. And that child developmental stages has been interrupted. When a child's developmental eight, uh, stages have been interrupted, they have they begin to, especially with a narcissist, they begin to have serious problems in that personality because now instead of them being able to turn outward like an empath wanting to save everyone, they turn inward and everything becomes about self-preservation, protecting that ego, protecting that that um that 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 uh, not that reputation but protecting the ego protecting because they have a very low self esteem low self worth and so they create something that they're not they create this facade of being powerful of being more beautiful than the average person like like I said though when you're dealing with childhood in childhood normally that is a process that is a normal process for children they're arrogant they're competitive you know they seem like they're little narcissists and most of them are not. But by the time they reach adulthood, which is about 19, 20 years old, that personality becomes permanent. That's a permanent personality. And so even though they're still studying narcissism, you know, they still have researchers that are, yes, it's a survival mode. And so they're still studying narcissism as a professional. And I could be wrong. I need to go study some research if they have some. As a therapist, I always say, if you can interact and interject counseling while they're young, there could be a possibility that you can change some of this because sometimes a child has been traumatized and you don't even know at what length or what has traumatized. Some of them are very sensitive. 
some of them are genetically are prone to it. Think about it. Whenever I'm in session and I do uh, assessments, a lot of you guys have been in session or, or let's say that even with medical, if you are dealing with high blood pressure, if you're dealing with diabetes, normally they ask you, does anybody else in your family have a heart condition? Does anybody else in your family have diabetes or cancer or anything like that? Because it's genetic. It's in your bloodline, right? Well, when you're dealing with a person that has narcissism or mental health disorders, usually I ask the questions, does anyone in your family have schizophrenia, psychotic disorder, PTSD, a major depression? Has anyone committed suicide? Because it gives me an idea of what's in the bloodline. And so when you're dealing with a person with narcissistic personality disorder, I guarantee you, you're going to find trauma and you're probably going to find someone in that family or brother, sister, mother, whatever, that has narcissistic personality disorder. Everybody doesn't develop it because you do have children that, like I said, they develop and become empaths. In childhood, though, you can notice that there's something very different about the child. You'll notice maybe that they get pleasure out of seeing people hurt. They get pleasure out of seeing you hurt. They do things, but it's almost like there is no connection with the child. They don't like to hug or they don't like to touch. When you hug them or touch them, they almost feel empty. You know, it's like they have problems. When you're dealing with a person versus you have narcissism narcissistic uh, relationship and versus narcissistic personality disorder a person that actually has narcissistic personality disorder uh, what you'll find is is these individual is it's like hugging a android another thing that you'll notice once you you have been involved with a narcissist is is that they are very passionate so a lot of people they say well I've had so much fun and when it was good it was good and when it was bad it was bad well obviously they got to pull you in one way and so of course when it is good they are idealizing you they are love bombing you that's what they're doing they're love bombing you and they, and they're charismatic and they have fun and some of them ladies some of them smell good some of them look good. Some of them drive good. Some of them just fine. Not even fine, y'all. Some of these men just fine. And some of you men, you know, they, they thicker than a snooker. You know, they, they gorgeous. They're beautiful. But these people that have NPDD, NPDD, NPD are very manipulative individuals. And they, what they do is, is when they get to know you, they're not actually like most of us. If we meet each other, we kind of build a rapport. We get to know know each other. I know what your boundaries are. You know what my boundaries are. You know, I know what you like and what is acceptable. I know what you don't like and what is. So we're getting to know each other. Well, with a narcissist, they don't come to you to try to get to know you. They're not. What they're doing is they're studying you. They study how you talk. They study what you what you what you like. You know, let's say that you're a lawyer or a nurse. They study your language. They pick up on your language. And they mirror you. They mirror you so you'll feel comfortable. And let me explain to you the dynamics of being mirrored. In um, If you ever watch any crime shows, if you watch FBI or interrogators or even those of you that are in the mental health field, one thing that we learn to do is we mirror our clients. We mirror our clients for the purpose of making them feel comfortable. If you're the type of person that crosses your leg, if you put your hand under your chin, if you cross your arms. So we tend to mirror you. If you lean forward when you're talking, we lean forward. If you lean back, whatever you do, we mirror you because if you see yourself you will feel more comfortable and you will put your guards down well with the narcissist they purposely do it in order to put your guards down they need to get to know you and the problem that most of us have is we talk entirely too much and then we jump into relationships before we are fully healed so guess what you're doing what you end up doing with this predator is you end up telling your whole life story you end up telling them what I like and what I don't like you you start telling them where you were hurt and what has happened. So what you're doing is, is you're laying out the script so that this person knows what role to play in this script. You're laying out a script so this person knows what to do and what not to do to pull you in. And once they pull you in, a lot of you, you know, jump into the bed with them. So now not only do you have a physical or mental bond, a psychological bond with them, now you have a sexual bond. A It's called a soul tie, meaning that your emotions, your heart, your will, everything is tied up with this individual. The whole point of getting 
uh, into your head, getting into your into your bed, getting into your household. And then, you know, for some of you, you guys have heard about the hobosexual, H-O-B-O sexual. The hobosexual is almost like a <laughs> is like a wandering individual. These individuals will use their sex, their charisma, you know, to get a hold of weak women or weak men. And then they uh, end up moving into your house. They take over territory. These people are Unfortunately, though they have a mental health condition or an illness, they end up manipulating and getting what they want. They, they manipulate to get what they want. There's nothing true about them. If you see the mask fall, oftentimes you'll see the mask fall when a narc injury happens and you see the true person that you are with. But do know that everybody, they throw the word out, narcissistic relationship. Really, a lot of people are talking about toxic relationships. They're not even talking about a narcissist because once you've had a true relationship a real relationship or not your relationship is real theirs is not they do not have empathy y'all something and you know and and for a, a better of lack of words something has happened in their mind that caused them to snap and turn off these buttons called empathy and compassion and they're not able to turn it back on it's just like i told you guys before there's a chemical called oxycotton that's a drug oxytocin Oxytocin is the chemical for a lot of you that have had babies and you breastfed. When you start breastfeeding, it causes, it releases these chemicals that causes a bond, a connection with the baby. This oxytocin causes, uh, also causes addiction. Whenever you're on drugs, it causes that, but it causes a connection. When you guys are with a narcissist, a narcissist is capable of turning all those emotions on all at one time. That oxytocin kicked in, the, the dopamine and serotonin, they know how to kick the, you know, and it's not that most people say, how do they know how to do it? It's not how do they know how to do it? They just do it. And then they watch to see how you react to what they are doing. But in reality, this person has kicked on all your emotions, sight, your sight, your sense of smell, Everything is very keen and all of a sudden you start these this oxytocin is released and you begin to connect with this individual on a level that you've never connected. Some of you say I have never loved a person like this. I have never been treated like this. I have never I have never felt this way. I have never been sexually stimulated this way. I have never had such deep conversations. If you actually step back and look at your relationship, you'll see that a lot of things that they were talking about. A lot of things that they were doing with you, they were mirroring you and regurgitating your own conversation back to you. They were regurgitating and they were telling you exactly what you were telling them. Most of them are, dis are not qualified. They'll make themselves look bigger than what they really are. They'll make them sound, themselves sound like they are actually more educated than what they are. That's that, grandi that grandios grandiosity. There we go. That grand, this that facade. A lot of them, when you find out they don't have the education, they don't have the credentials, they don't have anything. And yet they have created this facade that you fell for. And later on in the relationship, you realize that everything that this individual pretended to be, they are not. And so a lot of people, like I said, are actually not in a relationship with a narcissist. And when they say narcissistic relationship, really they're in a relationship, in a toxic relationship. And so I just wanted to say that, but now I wanted to open up the floor on YouTube and on the social medias and I'm going to spend about 10 minutes answering a question and then I'm switching over to Clubhouse to give my guest on Clubhouse an opportunity to ask questions and so give me 10 minutes let me let you guys ask some questions and I just wanted to put that out because uh, to my Clubhouse uh, family um, a lot of this information is on YouTube and I know Clubhouse is, is relatively new and so um, to introduce myself and what I talk about you guys are more than welcome Welcome to go to my YouTube channel. You can find me under Dr. Carmen Bryant, Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. And there are four, over three, 400 videos on there that talk about specific things in detail. But because of the fact that I'm not on Clubhouse that often, I just wanted to lay a foundation to help you guys understand the difference between narcissism or narcissistic relationship versus a person that actually has NPD. And so I'm just going to open up the floor if you guys will 
Give me 10 minutes to answer some questions and then I'm going to shut down the other social media and I'm going to come over to Clubhouse where uh, if you guys come over to Clubhouse, you can actually talk to me. You can actually talk to me and ask me questions. I get an opportunity. So if you guys give me 10 minutes, Clubhouse, 10 minutes and I'm coming over to talk to you guys. So will you post this video? I'm so good and I want to watch this again. Oh, yes, this video will be posted. Yes, it will be posted. Yes. Um, people tell me I shouldn't share these posts from your page because it shows one I'm not healed two I haven't moved on and three I'm protecting my um, projecting my experience to others well if they're telling you that nine times out of ten they don't want you to share the truth and you never know when you share this information you don't know who's in your circle that might be going through it as well don't pay attention to naysayers you know there are people out there that are going to benefit from it and you share the videos because you never know whose life you may save I have been on here before and I've had people um, inbox me and tell me please don't stop making these videos because I've had I think three individuals that were in the middle of committing suicide and my video just popped up randomly and because of the fact the video popped up randomly um, you know thank God their lives were spared because share the videos hey Miss Sharon hello Christine and Bella beautiful beautiful people um, why does de-escalation not exist? Well, you're dealing with a narcissist. A narcissist doesn't de-escalate. You can't use therapy. The therapeutic techniques that are often used in therapy for the average, you know, uh, depression and and uh, or maybe conflict management. Um, does not work with a narcissist. It's a personality disorder. It is a personality disorder. They don't know how to self-regulate. It's almost like an individual, and I hate to use this example, but a person that has diabetes and is on insulin has to take insulin to regulate their blood sugar. Well, a narcissist, um, it, you are the insulin. And so that's why people are called sources of supply because they get fuel from people. And so whenever they can cause you to react, not respond, when they get you to react, it's almost like an insulin boost for them. It's an ego boost and it makes them feel empowered. That's why they, some of them are very brutal and, and very, very toxic. Uh, how, uh, okay, you guys, when you write long, long, long questions, they go real, real fast, okay? How to, I totally turn this person off, stop having interest in me and stop him coming my way. You can't do it. It takes time, baby. It takes time. Uh, Dr. Carmen, you said, child, I was on a date with my narc and they derailed from our date to a children's playground playing on swings and slides saying, I like to live out my inner child. Do you know that a lot of narcissists have... Um, what's called arrested development. Um, and then if you actually have the opportunity to talk to a lot of them, which some of you, I, I mean, from a therapeutic point of view, a lot of them have arrested development. And you have to remember people that have been traumatized, if you, if you watch their behaviors, when their behavior come out, their behavior is usually at the age at which they were traumatized. They go back, it's regression. They go back to the time that they felt safe. And some of them actually, I have seen them resort to urinating in the bed and they could be 40, 50 year old men or women um, urinating in the bed, sucking their thumb, uh, having temper tantrums. And so a lot of them, once they are once they've been traumatized, you can watch them when that mask falls up. They are actually regress. I've seen one suck their thumb and it was horrifying, <laughs> but I didn't say anything, of course. Um, I left my narc in 2016. How do I get over him? It feels like I would never stop thinking about him. Your best bet, Vanessa, is to get into counseling. Get with a counselor that uh, specializes in grief and loss. Grief and loss. And then once you get past the emotional part, get with a good coach that can um, teach you about um, narcissist abuse. Um, let's see. Uh, after tolerating so much abuse from them and being beyond forgiven, will they become worse on their next supply? Yes. Most people assume that, see, this is the most painful thing for most people that have been in a relationship with a narcissist. You think that the new supply is getting something that you didn't get. And so a lot of you are afraid to let go because you're afraid that they're going to change for the new supply. They do not change for the new supply. As they um, get older, their, their personality disorder actually gets worse. And you have to remember that the new supply is different than you. Each individual, one of us are very different. And so what you see them doing is not that they're changing. What they're doing is, is they're integrating and mirroring the new supply. Let's say, for example, and I'm going to use an extreme case. Let's say, for example, you have a narcissist that when you meet them, let's say you're a businesswoman. And let's say when you meet this narcissist, this person presents himself as a professional businessman or a businesswoman. 
and they their suit tie, you know, very professional. Now, let's say that you see them out in public and they and you see them, you catch them off guard because they're around their friends and everything. But you see them sagging. They got on Tim Timberland boots. They got their sagging. You know, they done got a grill in their mouth and you're looking like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're professional. Yet you gangster. Then the next time you see them, they're in a motorcycle club or the next time you see them, they're 40, 50 years old. They enjoy the Greek fraternity. They're out there stepping with their old self. The next time you see them, you may see them and, and they got on, you know, they getting old. They got a muffin top that they walk around with, with, uh, with, with some um, skinny jeans. And they buy 5,000 pounds. Their skinny jeans got a muffin top. You know, they age poorly. So each narcissist, when they get with a new supply, all they do is they transform minutes. OK, they transform to what it is they're pursuing. A lot of you have left the, um, the narcissist. And when they come back to you or they hoover you and come back, they're not the same person that they were when they left you. You don't even recognize them. You don't know who you who you dealing with. You know, they left the businessman. They come back and they're a rapper. You know, they got gold teeth and everything, you know. And so anytime a narcissist goes find a new supply, all they do is mirror and transform to that new supply. No, that new supply. Let's give you an example. Let's say that that narcissist tells you that they don't like taking pictures with you or you're too fat or you're too skinny or I don't like hair weave or I hate long eyelashes. And then the next time you see them, they were the woman that's 400 pounds or they were olive oil. They were a skinny woman or they were the woman with eyelashes that reached the top of their head. They were the woman that's so fake that it's beyond you. They got weaved down to their ankles. So anything that they do is about supplies, all about themselves. They don't like taking pictures with you, but all of a sudden they in every. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. But every every. Every time they go, it's totally opposite of what they said to you. Number one, they like build a bear. A narcissist does not have their very own. They don't have their very own. Let's see. What's the word I'm looking for? Personality. They create a per Remember Jeepers Creepers and, and each part of Creeper, uh, uh, Jeepers Creepers was another person. A narcissist, a best, the best way to explain a narcissist is they are a cu accumulation of everybody that they meet. When they're low grade narcissists, they really don't know who they are. But as they begin to, it's almost like metamorphosize or as they begin to, um, at, you know, uh, uh, get older and they meet more people, they take pieces and parts of people's personality to create a personality. And so every time you see them, they're changing every person that they get with. They change to integrate, to be like that individual person. But believe you me, they cannot change what they present to you. Oftentimes that new supply is not going to show you the hell that he or she is going through. And so what you get to see, because you probably are still stalking their Facebook pages, you're probably still, you know, I wonder what they're doing. You know, what they're doing is, is they know that you're looking. So everything that they present to you is they're going to make sure they present everything that, that you didn't get. They're in condos. They're going uh, uh, on a safari. Thank you. Two minutes. OK, they're on a safari. They're taking pictures. They got all sorts of selfies and posts with this new supply. But I promise you this. They never, ever change. And remember, you've been with them. You've been with them for so long that you train them as to how much pain you can tolerate. So when a narcissist leaves you, they're leaving at the high level of pain that they left you. And most uh, supplies can't handle the level of pain that they're going to inflict. Normally, they will get with another supply that has a high pain tolerance because they come in at the level because a lot of you got with them and they weren't as bad as they were when they left you. So imagine the new supply is getting them at the level at which they left you and promise you that that individual it's all hunky dory it's all beautiful and wonderful because they're going to make sure you see the beautiful thing what they don't see is the same thing that they didn't see with you is the hell that you're going through and your family is going through behind closed doors so they do not change for the new supply i know it's very painful for you guys to watch because you see them doing things that they wouldn't do with you but it's all because of the fact that they're trying to hurt you and and see they thrive off of seeing you hurt they thrive off of pain well, what does Clubhouse app look like? There are more than one. It's the guy with the little Afro puff with the little twist in his head. Um, so, wow. Thank you. You are so welcome. You're so welcome. They never change. They never change. My time is up. Okay. 
So those of you that are on here, if you're on Clubhouse, please, if you come on over to Clubhouse, I'm doing a transition over so that I can talk to my guests here on Clubhouse. Um, but no, they never, ever, they never, ever change. They never, ever change because they get worse with time. As they get older, they get worse. It's a personality disorder, which is permanent. It's a permanent personality disorder. It cannot be treated. You can't, you can't change it. It won't. And a lot of people try to catch me off guard. So you telling me that God can't change them. Listen, God can change anybody that wants to change, but you have to want to change in order to change. A narcissist does not see anything wrong with themselves because they see everything wrong with everybody else. And it's your fault that they're like the way that they are. And so a person that is not truly wanting to change, just like a drug addict, you know, if a drug addict doesn't want to stop using drugs, it doesn't matter what you do. A drug addict is not going to stop using drugs. Think about it for just a minute. Some of you guys have been in a relationship with a narcissist and it doesn't matter what you do. Everything that you do is never, ever enough. You've given them your money, your time, your body. You've given them children. You try to be a homemaker. You do a swing off the chandeliers. You know, you do everything that you possibly can do, but they never will change and it's never, ever enough. You have lost yourself in the relationship. You're not even your true self. They told you you too fat, so you now you weigh two pounds. They told you you too skinny, so now you at 200 pounds. Your hair too short, so you done got the best weave from the temple. You were at the temple and you were collecting the hair and sold it on the sewing machine right there at the temple. You know, where they were cutting their hair off. You know, it doesn't matter what you do. It's never there. Yeah, they are insatiable. They are a walking empty pit. And no matter what you do, they're never satisfied. And no matter what you do, that hunger grows so big. They have to go on a hunt to look for other supply because they've depleted you. And once they leave you and you think everything is OK, you fill yourself back up. You wonderful. You feeling good about yourself they come back because you fool so they come back to suck the life out of you that's basically what they're doing and that's exactly what it feels like look at a picture of yourself in the past before you met them look at a picture of why while you were in the relationship now look at a picture of yourself after the relationship and look what you look like most of you guys started having stomach issue health problems some of you guys headaches you know muscle pains nerve conditions some of you guys gained weight and you weren't even thick you were swole. You look like somebody can pop you and Skittles will pop out. You know, water will start gushing out. And then later on, you may have gained weight. You still got a shape now. But when you were with them, you look horrible. You were sick. You had headaches, migraines, stomach problems, stomach bloated. You were just big, you know. You just, and, and, and this is all being in a relate. They not only affect you psychologically, they affect you health-wise and physiologically. I promise you, for those of you, uh, I'm getting ready to cut this off so I can come over to Clubhouse. Yes, for um, iPhones only. Um, I'm getting ready to turn off all my social media so I'm coming over to Clubhouse so I can talk to my guests over here. My little sister said, hey, Vicky. Um, but I'm getting ready to um, close out on all the other social medias. And so those of you that are on Clubhouse, you are welcome to follow me. I am right now Periscope. We know Periscope is going on, but I come live. It's going away. But I'm on live Periscope, Instagram. Twitter, I am on Facebook, and I am also on YouTube, which is my main channel. I have over four, you said 400 videos. There's about 400 videos um, on YouTube where whatever you're looking for concerning narcissistic personality disorder and relationship, I promise you, you will find a video in there that pertains to your situation. Some of you are still kind of skeptical because you're not quite sure whether you really are in a relationship with a narcissist. But if you go to the videos, I promise you, as you watch them, it's going to become more clear. And that brain fog that you had, a lot of you had a brain fog. And so a lot of you guys, it's almost like you're confused. You had a brain fog. It's like you can't think straight. Once you stay away from that narcissist, it's it's called um, no contact. And the longer you stay away, the more your mind starts clearing up. And hindsight is 2020, honey. And then you'll start realizing, I cannot believe this. Hey, Miss Jamila, I cannot believe this. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I'm getting ready to leave off of the other social medias. I'm coming over to Clubhouse so I can ask answer some questions so I can converse with a lot of people over here. If you are on Clubhouse, come on over to Clubhouse. Uh, come on over here to Clubhouse. So I can talk to you guys. I have some people that have their hands raised. And so I'm going to go and answer some questions so you guys can. Now, listen to all these people over here on social media, on my other social media. You guys are family. We've been together for.
for two and a half, almost three years. Like I told you, I don't come over here acting new and telling me stories that are going to last for 30 minutes. And I done got lost in your story. So I don't know what your question is. Come on over here and don't act brand new. Come on over. These are new people over here. Don't act brand new and embarrass me. Y'all come on over here. And so thank you guys so much to my Periscope family, my Twitter, my YouTube family, my Instagram, to all of you guys that tuned in to the broadcast. The broadcast will be posted, so don't worry. The video will be there. Come on over to Clubhouse. I love you guys so, so much. You guys know I'm on a sabbatical right now because I'm creating some programs for you guys. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, Haka, go on. If you have an iPhone, go on your um Go into your uh, uh, the the Clubhouse app. I mean, look up in your um, I don't know what it's called on your iPhone, your um, apps, and just put in Clubhouse. What you'll see the emblem for Clubhouse is gonna be an African American guy with like little um, twists in his hair. That's Clubhouse. So download Clubhouse, and right now I think it's by invitation only. Um, and so if you got somebody on here that can invite you, come on over to Clubhouse. And if you guys are on Clubhouse, Clubhouse is like a uh, it's almost like we're on a conference call. So come on over here. OK, I thank you guys so, so much, uh, Dr. Car Camera. <laughs> you mean Dr. Carmen educate you on narcissist is and how it affects you. Yeah, absolutely. But thank you guys so much for tuning in with me. I'm transitioning over to Clubhouse. I love you guys. You guys have a wonderful evening. You guys have a wonderful week. You guys stay narc free 